Welcome to the car guys and welcome to part two of our Q&A session. Why is there a part two? Well, the original episode was over an hour long, so I had to chop it down. Plus I was rapidly running out of memory and processing space on my laptop. So strap in for some more socially distanced questioning coming up right now. Here we go then for the second part of our socially distanced Q&A session. I've tried to make sure that both parts are evenly spread with interesting questions and answers, an equal amount of blueberries in each muffin. So let's get on with it. Keith McLaren writes, uh, which Ferrari under 90 grand is the best value as a modern classic? Interesting question. Have you got an answer? 355, obviously. Okay, interesting. I've gone for 360 Moderna, a manual gearbox, one of those or a 599 GTB, which you can now get for that. Oh, can you? What about a 550? Are they down below 100 still? Or are they still, have they No, they're down up? below that, but um, but obviously maintenance is, could, could be quite wheels. big. Yeah, whereas 599 GT, or a 599 GTB, that's the V12. I mean, that is sort mm. of, you know, that's got all sorts of lovely Enzo type uh, connotations. Yeah. But very, very, very affordable and a ridiculously competent car. Okay, Adam Lewis Cook wants to know, do you think you'll be offered a GT2, GT, I can't even finish this without laughing, GT3 or GT3 RS? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't. No. No. Adam, uh, did you see our Boxster video? <laughs> we're, we're never going to be offered another Porsche ever again. <laughs> that, that, we are, that is it for us. I mean, we had a fairly decent relationship with that dealership, but they're never talking to us again. Seema <laughs> Honey 43 asks, where would you go for the perfect road trip and what car would you take? Oh, that's a really hard question. Oh, it's a great question, but it's tough though, right? Because I mean, it's a whole are, episode, isn't it? Just, just I mean, on that. It literally is a whole episode. Yeah. Straight off the top of my head, without even thinking about it, I would say Snowdonia National Park. Um, and I'm just thinking back to some of the great drives we had. A 911, a standard Carrera RS, don't care what version, 911, Snowdonia National Park. I had a Swiss Alps trip booked, so to be honest, I would go Swiss Alps and Pista Spider, I think really? would probably probably quite happy for me, or Scotland and the 718 Spider, I think would be quite happy. JJ Wright one asks, uh, I'm looking for my first proper car, 35 grand budget, what's your pick? If this is your only car yep. and you want a bit of performance, but you also want some practicality, I would look at Golf R. Okay. I think they're brilliant buy, especially second hand. Okay. Um, uh, if you want, if you don't care about practicality um, and you want something that's just bonkers, then uh, hang on for the new Yaris GR. Oh, hello. Because that, that's going to be frankly mental. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And. And yeah, and probably not practical at all. <laughs> for me, I went through pretty much, I didn't go for anything kind of newish, so I just went for stuff that I considered to be quite proper, but that you could now get for that money thanks to the miracle of depreciation. Uh, so my list came up with Alpha Julia Quadrifoglio, which you can now get for 35. Oh. Proper, oh, proper hello, car. nurse. Hello. Hello, nurse. Uh, Aston Martin. Why don't we have one of those? <laughs> Aston Martin V8 Vantage. Get one of those for yeah. 35 now. Proper car. Yeah. Proper uh, car. Porsche, 10 grand servicing bills. Porsche 996 911. Get for that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Don't get Tiptronic, though, obviously. Uh, Audi R8 you can get for 35 grand. Yeah. Uh, Mercedes C63 AMG you can get for 35 grand. Wow, you really thought about this, haven't you? TVR Tuscan, how about that for a left field one? Proper car. What? Yep, get one a of those. Tuscan? Get one of those for 35 grand. Classic TVR. That's that would really scare the living daylights out of you, that will. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that was uh, so I can't. So, you know, so you've uh, you've gone you've gone for the uh, fifty year old. Uh, uh, I can insure all of these cars things. I was thinking that maybe J J Wright one was actually a young man and therefore couldn't insure anything, especially if he had TVR and Tuscan in his title. <laughs> <laughs> I t I took J J Wright one to be someone who perhaps had 
it was a little bit older, so maybe sort of 35, and oh, he's always had nice. crappy, sort of humdrummy cars, and now he wants a proper car, you see, so. Very much like my good self, you mean. Exactly, yeah. exactly, apart from the age bit. Philip GT3 asks, will you be going to the Nürburgring again? Uh, that sticker on the Talbot needs to be earned. Uh, I've never been to the Nürburgring, mm -hmm. and I, I can't see the Talbot going there. Oh, um, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I think it would be quite frightening around there, though. <laughs> but yes, uh, maybe. I, that sticker on the Talbot has nothing to do with me. So it was earned by the previous owner, so it is a legitimate <laughs> sticker. But if it really upsets you, Philip GT3, I will gladly remove it. <laughs> Rather than go to the Nürburgring. <laughs> well, no, it's not that. It's just round, obviously, living in deepest, darkest uh, Chav, Chasville, Essex, uh, there are quite a few small Fiesta 1.1s around here with Nürburgring stickers on them. That's so. true, that's true. And they've, yeah, all, they've all actually yeah. been round there, I'm pretty sure. They've all actually been round it and set like six minute times or something. I mean, so. wh whether the world needs another YouTube Nürburgring video, I'm not entirely convinced. But, um, Probably not. Maybe, maybe we would just maybe we would just do it as a as a just a fun yeah, thing. Yeah. And just nip over there. Tag and, it on to something else. Yeah, I think yeah, maybe. Anthony Rajwan, who has written in before, says if they were the same price, would you rather have a 911 R or a GT3 Touring? Uh, I can't. I actually can't answer this question because I've never driven a 911 R. So. Agreed. Um, yeah. It, had I driven one, I would I would give you my opinion, but I I can't. They're, they're too close. But they're, they're quite a way apart as well from what I've read. Yeah, um, I agree. I've not driven an R, don't get me started. Oh, but, um, but I have, of course, driven a GT3 Touring. So I'd say GT3 Touring on the basis that I've not driven yeah, an R. Yeah, so therefore, if you haven't driven it, it must be sh Joe Corti has, uh, is kind of two questions, but in one. MC12 or Enzo? Enzo. Enzo. Zonda or CCX? Zonda. Zonda. Yes, we agree. That's why we're the car guys. Flub1976 asks, ever owned an Aston Martin? If so, what would you, and would you consider another? Did you not watch our every car we've ever owned videos, Flub? Uh, no, I've never owned an Aston Martin. I have absolutely no plans to ever own one either. Mm, good answer. I, of course, if you'd watched the history, you'd know I've had a V8 Vantage and uh, I have no plans to buy one of the current range either, especially seeing as they dump their CEOs without telling them. But um, uh, none of the current crop at the moment have, uh, have got me excited. Can you please go to Caffeine and Machine in the Sunbeam when life returns to normal? Yes, of course we can. Yes. We will definitely, definitely do that, yes, for sure. And then a follow-up, will you be doing, will the Sunbeam be entered into any rallies? No, definitely not. <laughs> It's way, you can't, not proper real rallies, it's way too. Why not? It well, because I think it's too fragile for that. It's, it's an what, what about those owner club uh, oh, those rally things they've things. got? Yeah, yeah, those yeah. Ones. But well, I'm not doing a gravel stage in Wales, <laughs> if that's the type of rally you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Uh, so they call me, they call me the gaffer, asks, are you ever going to do any more videos on your Honda NSX? Uh, yes but the appetite on the channel has not been terrifically massive. One idea actually would be one of the one, one friend of the channel uh, from Hills of Limington has got a Toyota Supra Turbo. So same sort of era. So what we could do is put the two together and do a sort of like 90s vibe need for speed type episode. Would you rather drive a Trabant for the rest of your life or wear a Timex? <sighs> Hmm, I think I'd rather wear a Timex because, yeah, I, because Timex I've got a Timex. A <laughs> yeah, so have I. I really like Timex watches. Um, I had them when I was a kid, so I still buy them now. They're good value for money. Dan Coma. Oh, now this is crikey. This is a really, really tough question. This is an entire episode, this question. <laughs> you have to choose to buy an M car. Any age, what are you choosing? Oh, God, don't make me choose. Why would you make me choose? I'm going to choose uh, an E30 M3 or a 1M. In which case, I would have an M Coupe. Oh, back, going back to your an, roots. And, and an E28 M5. Ale.A63 asks, hypercars, are they useless? One word answer. 
Yes. 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 In almost every situation, hypercars <laughs> are useless. Rob Norton 97 would like to know what dealership do you get the most happiness walking into? I thought this was a brilliant question, actually, because it's not just about obviously the type of dealership or the car, but it's but it's all about you know the relationship as well. So I, I think it's brilliant. When I thought about this question, to me. Octane Collection and Dick Lovett Swindon came to mind. I don't know why, but those were the two that came to mind. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, do you know what? I don't. I like going to Octane so much, and Four Star Classics are good too, that I don't actually even consider them car dealerships. <laughs> it's such a friendly atmosphere. Yeah. You, know, you walk in, you have a coffee, you have a chat about cars, you tell stories, you have a walk around and a look at stuff. I, I just... It's such a nice experience going to those places. So the other one that I really love going to is Ashgood Porsche. I mean, those guys really super accommodating. The coffee down there is also amazing. Um, they've been great to us over the years and we always have good chat, don't we? Okay, Rick Rock Daily wants to know when are we going to get treated to a video on the Land Rover? Ah, the old Series 2A. We yes. keep forgetting about this, don't we? Yeah. I mean, it's been sitting there for, well, how long have we been doing this for now? 17 nearly years? Three, nearly three yeah. years. <laughs> and, uh, and we've never even mentioned it, apart from about three months ago or so. We've alluded to it, but we haven't taken it out yet. Mainly, I mean, at the moment, it's actually, in, it's not in bad order at the moment, but the four wheel drive system doesn't work at the moment. So I do need to get that fixed before we do a sort of proper review road test of it. Alfro underscore TT asks, do you still read car magazines? What's your main source of automotive info? Ooh. Well, well, I actually don't still read car magazines. And, and the reason for that is only because there's so much content available online now that, uh, and I can pick and choose, I can jump in and out of it. I don't, I don't have time anymore just to sit down, open a magazine and, and consume it with a nice cup of coffee. My life is too hectic for that. So it's good to kind of jump on your phone. There's loads of different info around. So that's kind of what I do. For me, I still get Evo magazine, uh, possibly more through habit than because I read every word. Right. So I still buy that. I don't read it as much as I used to. I find my I find my attention span wandering immediately and finding it very hard to stay focused on whole articles. Um, I was obviously obsessed with car magazine in the 90s. That was where my real sort of like car passion came from. But I, I agree. I sort of get most of my information now from videos and probably from social media and chat. The next question comes from Michael Watley and he asks, best car for a teenager? I think this is a really tricky question, mostly because yeah. the insurance- oh, Why would you ask us? I know, why would you ask us? <laughs> a, I can't even remember when I was a teenager. It was like 50 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's hard, right? Because insurance is enormous for teenagers now. I can. You know, when we were kids, yeah. it was expensive, but it wasn't like it is now, like two and a half thousand pounds a year for a 1.1 Fiesta. Um, exactly. I don't know, just go out there, find a cheap hot, hot hatch that you pay no more than 500 quid for, that's got the smallest engine you can possibly find, that's the lowest possible insurance group, and then take out a car loan, remortgage your house to get it insured. Best car for a teenager, you've got two answers. Number one, the absolute safest one that you can possibly afford, yeah. because obviously you don't want your precious teenager being mangled in some cheap, horrible wreck, <laughs> like you know my father was quite prepared to do. Yeah, oh, clearly. Um, <laughs> but probably, if I was gonna, if, if I had a teenager right now and I was gonna get him a car, I think I'd probably go for a VW Up GTI because I think they're amazing. Yeah, they're really good. But GTI, you never insure a GTI as a teenager. You got literally no hope. Next question, Consider Me Cars On wants to know, will you collab with any other YouTubers soon? Yes. Yes, yes. we will. Yes, yes definitely. We will. Yeah, we're always open for fun times like that, aren't we? Yeah, I think 100% once all this once all this is ended and we've got movement. Uh, so JM On Cars, we're definitely going to do something with James. It's interesting, actually, because obviously we, we were sort of fairly newish onto the 
onto the YouTube scene, and uh, and it's amazing how cliquey you know some of the YouTuber groups are. You know, some of them are sort of quite impenetrable, and you know they might have a lot of traffic, but are not really willing to sort of engage that much, or especially to do anything with them because they're so busy building up theirs. But um, certainly, when it comes to sort of like sizes around about the same size channel as the car guys, there are lots of, of really friendly guys who hopefully will do some stuff with. Tony GT92, what are your thoughts on the BMW E28 M5 or E30 M3? Okay, so I'm looking for E28 M5s at the moment, but they're all big, I bet you big are. money. I would love one of those, but way too, way too yeah. much money. Um, and how, I how much are they then? What sort, of, what sort of price range are they? For decent ones, they're 30, 40 grand. Okay. If not a bit wow. bigger. Wow. Um, but E30 M3s don't interest me. Uh, it's really? The left it's the left-hand drive thing. I can't. I can't be doing with it. Right. I can't be doing with it. But didn't we see? Isn't it the E28 M5? The one that was that like a Snitcher or Alpina or something version that you saw with all the transfers on it? At, at Four Star Classics, there was an Alpina yeah. recreation of an E28, and it looked amazing. And, and yeah. if that had been right-hand drive, I would have bought it on the spot. Yeah, um, but that was a, unfortunately that was a left hooker as well. I'm less I'm less sort of excited. I, I love the look of the E28, but I'm more I am I'm actually more excited by the E30 M3. Oh really? Yeah, I almost almost bought the um, the Cecotto or Ke Secotto version. Um, right. Almost bought one of those, which was which was absolutely a stunning car. But um, I sort of dip in and out of those, you know, wanting them, not wanting them, and in the yeah. moment I'm in a sort of not wanting phase. Right, Simon Glorit asks, how did you get into Ferraris? Open the door, get, you put your bum in the... No, too, too uh, sarcastic. <laughs> have, you, have, have you got into Ferraris, Jason? Would you say you've got into Ferraris? Well, I, obviously I've never owned a Ferrari, but yeah, I, as a child, you, I had the posters on my wall, right? I had a picture of an F40 up there. I watched Magnum pretty much because he drove a Ferrari. Um, when we were young, of course, Ferrari only ever made six cars a year, so to see one on the road was a was a was an amazing thing. It was you know it was so out it was of a the special ordinary. treat, such a special treat that it, it it just blew your mind to see something like that driving around. Uh, obviously, nowadays they're ten to a dozen, but um, yeah, I, I agree. It was poster on the wall as a child, car magazines in the nineties, and then the Outrun arcade machine. That's where I got my oh, uh, love nice, of Ferrari. Nice, loving that. Uh, AAA.cars asks, do you regret selling your F40? Well, do you? Do no. you? Well, no. you should. No. You should. No. <laughs> Don't make me hang my head in shame again. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You don't have to regret it anymore. It was a while ago now. I am almost over it. Almost. Pud underscore man 83. Thoughts on Richard Mille? Bubble going to burst? Uh, yeah, I have never is, liked Richard is, is Mille. Is there a bubble? I, I, yeah, there's a huge bubble, i.e. they cost like hundreds of thousands of pounds to buy and some of them are worth like up to a million quid or more. Um, they, I've never liked them, no interest whatsoever, hope the bubble bursts, but yeah, Richard Mille is not, not destined for my collection anytime soon. Gaudy <laughs> trinkets is what they are. <laughs> Dan Reed Jazz asks, is a McLaren 675LT a good investment in the current climate? No. No, da uh, Dan, we need to set you straight on this, uh, no. A 675LT is most definitely not a good investment. I've lost no. 100 grand on mine already. Uh, if you want to buy one, buy one because it's one of the best driver's cars ever made, but definitely do not buy it as an investment. No, and I, and I absolutely 100% agree with that. That car is definitely one of the best cars you could ever, ever drive. It is frankly incredible what that car can do yeah. and how much control and poise and everything else and the power, the, the whole package is is just fantastic. But the thing's gonna shit money like like a dog that's eaten too many chews. Definitely, yes, exactly. <laughs> like a dog that's eaten a kebab.
questions. OK, that's all your questions answered for this session. Hope you enjoyed the answers. Uh, remember, if you ever want to send us questions, please do on Instagram or Twitter or through our website. Uh, we're always more than happy to answer your questions. We do these episodes sort of every kind of six months, but uh, we are answering questions all the time behind the scenes. Well, thanks for watching this questions and answers episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. Check out our Instagram account, which is where these questions are asked. And don't forget to check out our website and you can get lovely merchandise as I am wearing here. As am I. And we'll see you on the next episode next week. <laughs>